know, it's great to be reasonable and rational, discuss things, try to arrive at an acceptable compromise that everybody can live with. But once in a while, when you've had enough, you've got to take action. You've made your point, they understand your position, and yet nothing changes. And that moves you from the arena of diplomatic conciliation into the area of taste of your own medicine. because our local paper, The Daily Movement, is shut down for two weeks. <laughs> I figure people are going to miss it. That's a long time to go without a daily movement. <laughs> hey, Red. Yeah? There's no paper this week. No, no, the, the publisher and the editor and the reporter and the photographer and the cartoonist and the typesetter have all gone on vacation. But don't worry, he'll be back in two weeks. <laughs> okay, I wish somebody would have told me that because now no one's going to see my ad. You don't need to run an ad, Winston. I mean, that truck of yours is a, an excellent marketing tool, you know? <laughs> and that thing assaults all five senses every time you do a drive-by. Brad, it's not an ad for my business. It's, it's more of a personal ad. Oh. Yeah, see, I'm looking for a woman who'd be willing to have my baby. <laughs> you know, I don't think a local ad is going to work. I think you need to advertise where the women don't know you, Winston. Why this sudden urge to be a father? Red, I'm Winston Rothschild III. Yeah. See, it's taken three generations to build this septic-sucking dynasty, and, and I can't let it end with me. Oh. Yeah, besides, I promised my dad that I'd make sure this company keeps going as long as the customers keep going. <laughs> you know, maybe you should, you should be using science on this, you know? They, they, they have this uh, surrogate mother thing now where they take a sample from you and they implant it into a woman and then she delivers a baby nine months later for a fee. You know what? Dalton's daughter might be interested in that. Uh, no thanks, Red. I mean, what if the kid inherited my height and Dalton's hair? It'd be a troll. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, adoption. Oh, and you know what? That makes a lot of sense, genetically speaking. Yeah. <laughs> because I think there's got to be a future Winston Rothschild IV out there somewhere, Red. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've got an appointment with the adoption agency in about a half an hour, and I was kind of hoping that you'd tag along and, you know, sort of vouch for me. Oh, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. So we're, we're looking for a baby who could possibly be in the sewage business? Red, <laughs> all babies are in the sewage business. <laughs> And today's winner will receive this beautiful monogrammed handkerchief. I already have a monogrammed handkerchief. Yeah, but this will have your initials on it. <laughs> okay, cover your ears, Mike. Red, you've got 30 seconds to get Mike to say this word. Light. Light. Yeah, all right, Dalton. <laughs> and go. Okay, Mike, uh, at night it's dark, so in the day it's... Easier to get caught. <laughs> Okay, when a room gets dark, it's time to turn on the... Charm. <laughs> okay, if you, if you see a guy, suddenly he gets religion, eh? You figure he must have seen the... Electric chair. <laughs> okay. Let's try this. Which beer do fat people drink? The last one. <laughs> Time's almost up, Red. Yeah, okay. Okay, Mike, if something's not heavy, it's... Easy to steal. <laughs> Oh, yeah, especially if you're light-fingered. That's it, that's it. Uh, 
I was thinking about regrets the other day. Do you have any regrets, Mr. Green? Well, not so far, but this conversation has potential. What about you, Mr. Humphrey? Any regrets? I ain't got nothing but regrets. How about you, Mike? You must have a ton of regrets, huh? Well, only one. Children. I regret not having any children. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. Oh, or did you say you regret not having children? You know, Bernice and I don't, don't have any kids. We tried for a couple of years, but then my brother had Harold, and we kind of took that as a warning. Oh, I'd like to have lots of children. Your parents have lots of kids, Mike? My mom did. My dad didn't have any kids. I don't think he was my dad. Well, kids are a lot of responsibility, Mike. You have a daughter, don't, don't you, Dalton? Don't. Yes, 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 I do, yes. I have a daughter. So I've been wearing the same clothes for the last 12 years. Kids are so great. They're so innocent. They're so full of hope for the future. You know, if I'd had kids, I don't think I'd ever have been in trouble with the law. How old were you on your first arrest? Eleven. <laughs> That's a pretty young father. You know, Mike, you might want to think about getting a life partner before you leap right into having a family, you know? There still has to be a woman involved in having kids, doesn't there? I mean, you don't just download it off the internet. No, no, no kids are, and kids are great, you know, but if you have a son or a daughter, it's kind of like a promise that you're going to raise them properly and you're going to take care of them until they're on their own. Oh, shit, they'll never be on their own. <laughs> are you prepared for that one, Mike? <laughs> I just want to have kids. They'll learn to be good people. Well, they learn mainly from your example. Well, that's a dumb system. You know, my dad used to tell me that a man's home is his castle. He also told me to learn Esperanto and buy an amphibious car. My dad was wrong. The only time a man's home is his castle is when the queen is out at the mall. <laughs> so today on Handyman Corner, I'm here to prove that although a man's home is not his castle, his car is his cottage. Okay, as always, when you're doing a major renovation, the first thing you have to do is gut the whole interior. You want to do this as quickly as possible, because if you take your time and do it properly, you'll just get bored and then you abandon the whole project. That's what happens when guys do things right. Whenever you see a half-painted boat or a partly converted school bus in a guy's backyard, that's the price of being a perfectionist. You want to keep the seats, though, eh? They make great couches for your castle. Maybe put them in the servants' quarters. <laughs> Found a fair bit of food garbage under the seats and what have you. Spilled drinks, taco juice, that kind of thing. Oh, man. Look at all the coins. <laughs> Can't really call it loose change. OK, once you got the space all cleared out, you're ready for the most important piece of furniture. It's an old barber's chair. I mean, it's perfect. It swivels, it reclines, the footrest comes up, and let's face it, at our age, we're not using it as a barber chair nearly as often as we used to. <laughs> you know, a one-seater car makes a lot of sense to me. A little harder to reach the pedals, but you don't need any little side airbags. Eh? And look where you're sitting. You're right in front of the heater control and the radio here. That's a lot more interesting than watching the road. <laughs> Let me show you the family room. I got my microwave back there, the TV, the mini fridge, and with open access to the trunk, it's very private, and there's plenty of leg room. Plus, I have two garbage cans in the unit. I believe they're called windows. Oh, yeah, we're a little shy on headroom back there, but all I do is use this boat hook and get myself microwave popcorn or the safety beverage that goes with it. <laughs> No, a man's house is not his castle, but maybe his car is. And with the sunroof and this rope ladder, this castle even has a turret. Isn't this a great setup? I can stand up here on my turret and survey my entire kingdom. I call it a turret, but some people call it a widow's walk. I have no idea why. Oh, forgot my coffee. No problem. Just remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> I 
want to take a minute to talk about the parent problem. Now, I don't mean the parenting problem when your kids come home with blue hair. <laughs> I'm talking about the parent problem when your aging mom and dad come home with, well, with blue hair. <laughs> you know, it's a fact of life that when senior citizens can't take care of themselves anymore, they often move in with their own middle-aged kids. That can be real tough on some of you late bloomers who just moved out of their house a couple of years ago. <laughs> but either way, you and your parents have different lifestyles. So the, the watchword here is patience. You may not understand why anyone needs to be up for the day at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but then you've never eaten supper at 3 in the afternoon <laughs> just to save a buck and a half. Likewise, try not to get upset when they start complaining about your food or the wallpaper in their room or the temperature of the house. It's just their way of telling you that they love you and that you know nothing about anything. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, and there may be some role reversal involved. Remember how annoyed you used to get when you were a kid and they'd tell you to turn down the TV? Well, you're going to understand how they felt when you start hearing Andy Rooney at 120 decibels. <laughs> The main thing is, don't look at this as a crisis. Think of it as a learning opportunity. Here's a chance to show your own kids what's going to happen to them if they don't get smart and start saving for your retirement home in Florida right now. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Well, Winston and I went down to the adoption agency, hoping we could find him a child so that his family's septic business wouldn't go down the drain. <laughs> well, it didn't go real well. Hey, Red. Yeah? Good news. What? Yeah, they want to see us down at City Hall. Huh? Oh, yeah, some big announcement or something. There'll be a whole bunch of us who are looking to adopt. Well, I don't think you have a chance, Winston. Well, that's a negative, Red. I thought our interview went really well. No, <laughs> no, no, no. No. Good interviews go more than three minutes, uh, Winston, as a rule. I mean, we weren't in there long enough to boil an egg. Well, maybe not, but you sure scrambled a few. Well, I couldn't lie to them. Well, no, not lie. Never lie. Embellish, maybe. You know, put a nice spin on some of the answers, perhaps? Winston, you're a 35-year-old bachelor who spends 18 hours a day in your sewage truck. I'd hire a nanny. I told them that. You told them I was the nanny. <laughs> I can't relate to babies. Oh, sure you can, Red. Don't sell yourself short. Right. You got a lot in common with a baby. Soft head, take a lot of naps. Oh. <laughs> I'm the leader of Possum Lodge. I got all the children I can handle, all right? Look, Red, just come down with me for the big announcement, okay? There's a whole bunch of us that got turned down, and we just want to stage a little protest, and maybe they'll change their mind. And look, if this doesn't work, I promise it's the end of it. Well, sounds like a waste of time to me. I've been married 35 years. Protests don't work. <laughs> well, I'll do the yelling. You just come along for moral support. Come on, what do you say? All right. Red, look, I gotta have this baby. I need an heir. You have an heir. What you need is a shower. <laughs> we decided to have a little basketball shooting competition between Mike and Walter, and I was putting down the three-point line, uh, count the basketball court in town there, and... Uh, of course, Walter had the full gear on, so Mike's trying to adapt his outfit to match. And he's got, wow, he's got the tearaway pants that Mike doesn't have. Oh, yes, he does. And uh, those legs are pretty darn white over there, but... Uh, so I had, I was explaining, I had done the three-point, according to the official rule book of pro basketball, and so uh, Walter's going to go first and just... Uh, two, we're going to give two points apiece for these, and that's a little short, uh, a little short there, Walter, but let's see how Mike can do. He obviously doesn't have any friction to hold him back, and... Uh, Okay, very similar type of shot, so uh, that would be 0-0 zero, zero so far. So I'm thinking, okay, let's make it a little easier. Uh, instead of going with the pro basketball, let's go with the college basketball handle. A little closer line. So again, Walter goes, and this this should go a lot better. I'm thinking I'm feeling really good about this. Okay, let's go. Just fire away. Go. Shoot her up there. Where you go? Where you go? Nope, no better, was it? No, nope, not really. So now uh, Mike tries a different approach, the uh, underhand girly approach he learned in prison, and uh, she, he shot it back. Oh! All right, so he took the aerial off the van and he wrecked the ball, and now Walter's figuring he should win by default because we can't keep the... There can be no more competition, we don't have a ball. Mike says, wait a sec, I'll get another ball. I can get another ball, don't you worry. So he's, there's some poor little kid playing tether ball there and uh, not bother anybody. And Mike comes in, and uh, this is called barter, for those of you who are new to the country. And he takes that, and then he's gone. 
So he comes back, and now I'm, I'm, I'm abandoning the, the college line. We're going with toddlers. <laughs> the toddlers three-point line, and... Uh, oh, here's Mike. The mic's all set. And up, oh, and... And it's good! Yeah! Two points! All right. So, Walter, no problem. Let's see how he does. And he's going to start to show off a little bit. Instead of just doing the jump shot, he's going to do the green map, the old Jabbar hook job there. Perfect. There's two. Oh, we're all tied up at two points. No, no, we don't need that. We don't need any of that. There's no, there's no need for that kind of thing. So Mike's got a plan. He goes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. And uh, what are you going to do? Oh, it's some, some kind of a trick shot, I'm thinking. He's going to, oh, I know. He's going to look in the mirror. Oh, yeah. Look in the mirror over the shoulder. Oh, my gosh, it should be good. It should be good. And Beautiful, beautiful, right through. There's four points. So that's, uh, that's a challenge to Walter. All right, we don't need that. We don't need that attitude. Uh, we, now a challenge to Walter. So he takes the challenge and runs with it. He takes the rope right off there. And he's going to use the mirror. No, he's not going to. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Totally without looking. And she's in. We got a four point tie. All right, now we move on to the. Uh, to the uh, layup section and uh, slam dunk. Look at this, and he's up and in and oh, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, he's got great vertical. He takes the net with him. It's gonna be uh, tough for Mike to t uh, top this one, but uh, he's got a plan. He goes down to the boathouse and he gets, uh, gets one of the canoe paddles and he's got an old uh, bungee on there and he, so he ties the tether ball onto the bungee cord. Oh, he's got mine there and up he goes down with the back. Oh, it's a paddle ball and he's racking him up. This is a part of the show where we feature those three little words men find so hard to say. I don't know. And uh, today's letter reads as follows. Dear experts, I pride myself in keeping up with the current trends and fads, no matter how fleeting they might be. Recently, I read in the papers about something called the Internet. What's that? <laughs> What's the Internet? Boy, that must have been some kind of coma, huh? <laughs> Yeah, all right, well, the Internet is uh, something that connects to your computer so that you can contact everybody in the world who wants to sell you something. No, 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 that, that's not necessarily true, Uncle Red. No, no, the Internet is probably the most important innovation for communication education since the movable type. I spend hours on the Internet. Boy, I didn't know you even had a computer, Dalton. Oh, gosh, yes. I just find there's so much fascinating information on the Internet. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. The unfortunate aspect is how much pornography's on there. <laughs> well, you know, some people, that's all they use it for. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? <laughs> I don't know any of that. Well, at least not intentionally. <laughs> but not very often. Well, okay, okay, okay. Anne Marie wanted to remodel the kitchen, right? So I did a search for pantries, but there was there was a typo. It's not what the internet's for, Mr. Dalton. Look, it was an accident, all right. I mean, besides, it's private. Who's gonna know? <laughs> well, anybody who has access to the computer. Stored somewhere in your computer is every website you've ever visited. Yeah. Every everyone. <laughs> How long have you had a computer, no? Um, it, it's, it's Anne Marie's. <laughs> I gotta go. You better call Rothschild sewage today, because that soggy mess is here to stay. Whatever goes up comes down, they say, but whatever goes down doesn't always go away. <laughs> Okay, I would suggest that if any of you ever go to a protest, that you find out what the protest is about before you get there. It was about the right to adopt a child. Yeah, okay, and I was fine with that. I just was a little surprised when I realized that wasn't the main agenda. <laughs> Keep them out of my tent. You know, we're all just people, Red. You know, I, I thought it was good to show our solidarity. Yeah, no, I was fine with that, but did you have to put your arm around me? Red, I was upset. I mean, it was obvious that they weren't going to let me adopt. 
They were, they were discriminating against my entrepreneurial lifestyle. No, they were not. They were protecting an innocent child. They want the child to be raised in a loving atmosphere. You love your job and your atmosphere is toxic. <laughs> well, now what am I going to do with the family business and no child to take it on? I mean, septic sucking is not something you just fall into, Red. <laughs> well, you know what? If you want to immortalize yourself, why don't you add your face to the logo of the company? You know what, like Colonel Sanders? You could become the Colonel Sanders of septic sucking. That's a pretty good idea, Ed. Oh, yeah. Every time people saw your face, they'd think of sewage. Uh, meeting time, anyway. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll be down in a minute, all right? Uh, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. Let me rephrase that. I'll be coming home straight after the meeting. And to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang, I'll be here at Possum Lodge. Keep your stick on it, guys. All right. Bow your heads for the men's prayer. I am a man, man that I can change if I have to, I guess. Um, these flowers came for you, Mr. Green. Mm -hmm. They're from an admirer. Thanks, Doug. Ha, ha, ha.